بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وأصحابه وبارك وسلم My beloved brothers and sisters Speaking of the status of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam It is impossible to do justice to his status If I were to tell you that Allah Almighty himself has said that if you would like to be blessed tenfold, if you would like to be blessed tenfold, there is something you need to do. You simply need to send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by doing that, you will be blessed tenfold. Imagine the love that Allah Almighty has for Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to that degree that if you were to just say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam may Allah's peace and blessings be upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah says you have already called for a tenfold blessing from Allah for yourself that's the type of love so, recently I visited Medina Munawwara. And no matter how many times we visit, it is always a real feeling. Something that cannot be described. Only those who have been know what it feels like. And even when you go, it depends on your level, your sincerity, and your intention. The level of that feeling is related so you would find within yourself that each time you go that feeling is strengthened if you have strengthened yourself or it's weakened if you are weak there are people who live in Medina who could not even be bothered to go for a moment and spend time in al-masjid al-nabawi or to make salam to Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in that masjid or in his resting place and yet there are others who live miles away, thousands of miles away, whose hearts are stuck in Medina Munawwara. May Allah make us from among them. And I met a certain brother. And his sister had a message for me, which moved me. What was it? He says, that she says, or she says, that I have heard a lot of your lectures. There's one thing I want to correct, or I want to bring to your attention. When you say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, don't rush. Immediately, I felt within me, this is absolutely correct. No matter where it came from, it's okay who is saying it. Male, female, young, old, related, non-related. The fact that they are giving you a powerful piece of not only solid advice, but correct. Because in our speech, we actually end up saying, Sallallahu without thinking that it's a great act of worship just to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And trust me, from that moment to this moment, it hasn't been too long. But every single time I have said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I've thought of those people I met. And in my mind, I say they have a full reward for correcting and reminding that this is actually a huge act of worship. So I have chosen today to share it with all of you to say, take your time when you are saying Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Say it correctly. Try and pronounce it properly. Make sure you feel it within you. Make sure you understand what you are saying. And trust me, your life will change. Because you have a tenfold reward from Allah for each time that you are saying it and this is why when i visited malawi and i visited many times and some of you may know because you have been there i'm sure if you were to speak in one of the masajid in the rural areas in the localities where people are listening to you the first thing that you notice is when you say the name muhammad 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam better than you and i and our own congregations and environments immediately all of them say with a good tone sayyidi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have you experienced that i have and people just look well that's the right way of doing things sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that if you hear my name and you don't say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is a dua that was made against such a person by jibril alayhi salam we wouldn't like that to happen so the point i'm raising is the value that allah has given the blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is such that it depicts the love of Allah for the best of creation, the most noble of all prophets of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine if you were to say, you say this name and you say this, I'll give you a thousand rands each time you say it. I promise you the value of sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is way beyond any material item you will have blessings, you have contentment, you have the pleasure of Allah, you have a greater chance of the intercession of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he says very clearly, the most deserving of my intercession on the day of judgment is the one who sends blessings and salutations upon me the most. So why don't we say it in your day as you are continuing with your chores, with your work, whatever it may be, from time to time, remember that the biggest gift that you and I have, the fact that we are part of the Ummah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't be ashamed to say it aloud. Don't be ashamed to repeat it every time you hear the name. It's okay. May Allah grant that capacity to us. Ameen. Allah will open your doors, create ease in your life, bless you with sustenance, grant you good health. And open all the closed doors. The difficulties will be made easy. The sicknesses will fly out like you can't believe. All of it is because you have given a portion of the due owed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Imagine if you gave more than that. And this is why, when we say the biggest favor is the fact that we are the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we have iman, we have conviction, belief in Allah subhanahu wa taala. He sent to us this great messenger, and he made us from his ummah. It is a blessing, the greatest of all blessings for us. The day that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was born, lots of miracles happened. You and I were non-existent in this form; we were not yet born. Who knew that out of our good fortune from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would have kept our birth after that so that we could be from his ummah? It's a blessing. The day that he was born was by far the greatest gift of Allah Almighty to this ummah. And as he grew older, he was given nubuwa and prophethood at a certain point when he was 40 years old. So he was not a youngster. 40 years old, he's a grown man. And the moment he came up with the truth to the people, one thing was clear. He was persecuted. His people were persecuted. They faced difficulty after difficulty, challenge after challenge. Hardship upon hardship. In fact, when his wife Khadija radiallahu anha took him to her cousin Waraka bin Nawfal, who knew of the previous messengers and the prophets and some of the scriptures that he had studied, he said, I wish that I would be alive the day your people drive you out of your city. That was strange. We are just telling you that this is what happened to us. You are confirming that that was Jibreel alayhi salam. You are confirming that this is the beginning of this beautiful gift of Allah to humanity at large. And at the same time, you are saying, as much as whatever you have told me now is the truth, your people will drive you out of your city. Why am I saying this? You might know what I've just said, because in our lives, it is the plan of Allah. The reverts who have reverted to Islam, ask them 
It is not possible that they will have it smooth sailing. It is not possible for someone who wants to hold fast to what Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have taught us to have it smooth sailing. It's not going to last forever. You and I are fortunate in this part of the world where we can practice upon the deen without fear. Thank Allah for that. In other places, they thought it would last forever until the time came when persecution began. وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah Almighty tells us very clearly, do you think it is sufficient for me or for, for one to say that he is a believer? He's a believer, I'm a mu'min, I'm a Muslim. And then you won't be tested? We have tested those before you in order to distinguish between those who are truthful in their claim and those who are false in their claim. It's easy for me to say that I'm a Muslim, but the day a little hardship comes, are you quick to forego your faith? Recently, I was asked again, and I'm going to give you real life examples. I was asked about, I see the sisters are not going to like this, but we have to say it nail polish and the argument was this is permeable it's not permeable water goes through it doesn't go through and i said subhanallah with no persecution whatsoever you are still fighting about an inch of paint on your nail throw it out whether it is permeable or not do you love allah and his rasul enough to realize that people gave their lives for this message of allah to get to you they died they were murdered they were persecuted they took it for the message to get to you and you without persecution. You want to fight over an inch of paint, throw it out of the window. Allahu Akbar. I told you they won't like it because the truth bites. It hurts. Let the water get onto your entire nail. Not just a small part of it claiming to be permeable or not. You don't need it. What if a messenger came to you and told you that you did? What you did was wrong throughout your life and none of your salah was accepted too late. You cannot go back to those who argued with you that it was permeable to tell them that you know what? It was you guys who led us astray. When the people see the punishment in front of them, they will want to disassociate from those whom they followed and those whom, whom they followed will want to disassociate from them. We were wrong. Sorry, man. Sorry. A guy bashes your car, written off completely. He jumps out. Well, you've broken all your bones. He comes and all you can hear him saying, Sorry, I just drank one bottle too much. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. You can't just get away like that. Anyway, the point I'm raising is, those who were persecuted like Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu continued to say, Ahadun Ahad, I believe in one Allah. They were offered whatever they were offered. They refused it. They were harmed. They were tortured. They were beaten physically. Ammar ibn Yasir, most of his family lost their lives. Sabran ala Yasir, fa inna mawidakumul jannah. The Prophet says, Oh, bear patience, O family of Yasir, for indeed your abode is paradise. With persecution, they never compromised what was right. With us, no persecution, we want to compromise it. You get the point? You get where we've gotten to now? Which one of us is equivalent to Bilal ibn Rabah? Radiallahu an. Never mind putting the man on the hot rocks of the desert. For us, without even telling us about hot rocks of the desert, they just tell us there will not be any air condition in your room. And you do what they want. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. We're going to take the electricity away four hours a day. You almost lose your iman because of that. Is that what happens? I hope not. I hope not. It must strengthen us. Be strong on your faith. The 313 who fought in the battle of Badr, what did they fight for? For you and I. And today we are fighting over something like nail polish. I'm so sorry to give that example. It just came to my mind while I was sitting here. But that's not the only example on earth. There are so many other things. 
Halal, haram, we are ready to compromise completely, without a doubt, in our minds. Yet, there is great doubt out there. May Allah Almighty strengthen us. When Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gathered Quraysh, the cronies and his relatives, those were his people, his tribe. And he told them, I'm warning you of something severe, severe punishment that is about to come. Worship Allah alone. They fell into several categories. The chosen few stuck with him. The greatest of all of those companions, Abu Bakr, as Siddiq radiallahu anhu, he was a friend. He knew this man is not a liar. If he did not lie to us regarding material items of this world, it's impossible for him to lie to us about the world of the unseen and the hereafter. Simple point. Today, people will lie to each other because of a rand and a dollar. And because of a little bit of profit and because they don't want to lose, they will lie to each other. This car, they say, no damage whatsoever, as is. And you know very well it was accident damaged. People cheat in business. You have something you know is defective and you say, perfect order, don't worry about it. Just buy this thing, You'll, you won't go wrong. And in your heart, you know you are lying. Then you are here for salah. And again, I'm not saying coming for salah is a bad thing, it's a good thing. But we ought to think to ourselves, if there is a person who never ever lied regarding dunya, do you think he's going to lie regarding deen? Come on. That was the common logic of the closest friends of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa How many of us have friends who are truthful to begin with? In fact, to begin with, how many of us are truthful enough for people to even befriend us? Many times we would say, well, there's hardly anyone like that today. Well, charity begins at home. I can become an honest person, upright person, straightforward person. Whenever we talk about things, people like to think of others. Let's think of ourselves. Subhanallah. When Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told his people what he told them, Abu Lahab began to scoff at him. Ali hadha jama'atana. You gathered us to tell us there's one God. Who do you think you are? We're sitting back. We're relaxing. We're enjoying. <coughs> and what do you think you're trying to tell us? Leave us alone. He said, no, I have to remind you. His following began to grow, but very slowly. Very slowly. And then they got worried. So they started offering him things because they realized the accusations they leveled against him were not good enough. My brothers and sisters who are reverts, my brothers and sisters who are trying to tread the correct path, my brothers and sisters who are trying to dress correctly who are trying to fulfill that which Allah has ordained. If you are persecuted a little, thank Allah, he has chosen you to go through a portion of what his most beloved has already gone through. It's a sign of acceptance. No way can a person say, I'm a Muslim, and then they won't be tested. No way. People will laugh about your beard. They'll laugh about your scarf. They'll make it difficult for you to read salah. They'll make it difficult for you to dress appropriately. They will laugh about everything and anything. Not just laugh. They might pass laws to ban you from fulfilling your own prayer. It can happen. It may happen. It has happened. That is the reason why we have the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that we can look at the one whom Allah has declared he loves the most. Look at him. If the love of Allah was connected to how much money you had, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would have had Everything. He was offered it and he declined it. The love of Allah is connected to the contentment Allah places in your heart as a result of your iman, your yaqeen, your conviction, your faith in Allah. I'm happy with what Allah has given me. I'm not going to run behind tags and names and brands and so on and so forth beyond a capacity given to me by Allah. What that means is you are allowed to drive a good car. You are allowed to have beautiful clothing. You are allowed to have a good scent. You are allowed to have a beautiful home for as long as it does not compromise your relationship with Allah. Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went through the hardship. Like I was saying, they accused him firstly. They said, you're after power. You're after money. You're after women. You're after whatever else. You, want, you are a magician. You are a madman. All those names were used against whom? 
against the one whom we as Muslims say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when we hear even the first two letters of his name. They called him all sorts. Say if someone calls you a madman, smile and thank Allah, Ilaha Al-Alameen. Today you allowed me to taste something. My blood would have boiled had it not been that my Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has endured worse than this. Subhanallah. Don't worry. Let them call you names. Your family members may accuse you because in families, some of them do not like the fact that others want to become closer to Allah, either in their dress or they want to turn their lives and change in a positive way. Sometimes your own parents might not like the fact that you want to put on a scarf on your head and they will tell you, do you know what? You're too young or you look like a nun or whatever else it may be. Those type of words coming from the mouths of those who claim to be Muslim. It's happening. Don't worry. Take it in your stride. Don't let it divert you from the straight path. The Prophet Muhammad wasallam says, there will come a time when the one who wants to stick or be steadfast on his or her faith will be similar to the one holding a red hot coal. My brothers, my sisters, don't give up your faith just because of small issues here and there. No, you are gifted. And anyone who is gifted is mahsood. People will be jealous of the gift. Wallahi, if they knew the contentment we were in, if they knew the happiness, if they knew the joy we got from putting our heads down in sujood and prostration for the one who made us, they would fight us to take it away from us. They don't know. Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. In Ta'if, the Prophet sallallahu says, Oh Allah, guide my people because they don't know. Had they known, they wouldn't have done this. So we may be persecuted. Someone wants to become a Muslim. One of the biggest challenges they have is that the family may disown them. But a bigger challenge than that is the Muslim Ummah will not even allow them to marry their own children or daughters or sons. Why? That's a revert. There was a man who came to me and told me I wanted to get married to so and so and a good man, a great Hafiz, great Qari. And he says, they said, no, you're a revert. I called the father of the girl. I told him, Sorry to call you like this, but what is the story? He said, nothing wrong with the guy, but he's a revert. How can I give my daughter? Do you know what I told him? Abu Bakr was a revert, Umar was a revert, Uthman was a revert, Ali was a revert, radiallahu anhum, Jami, and if they came to you, what would you tell them? It was quiet. Those were reverts. <laughs> they were all new to Islam. If I were to tell you the Qari who read the Qirat in front of us today is a revert, a few years only. What would you think? Would you believe it? Yet he reads better than you and I. The eloquence of which is amazing. So when you revert to Islam, you have to be prepared to go through a lot. Your family may disown you. People, Muslims, the only thing they offer you is when you finish your shahada. They say takbir. And everyone says Allahu Akbar after that. Goodbye, my brother. That's it. You know more. Don't even come near my house. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. How? That is the persecution. Sometimes we are the guilty ones. We have persecuted them without us realizing that we are the criminals. May Allah not make us that. Let's think. Imagine the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. One is they declared their iman. Family members disowned them. They were persecuted physically as well. Their property was usurped. Some of them lost their lives. They were driven out of their homes and their cities. And they went to Medina Munawwara. The only time the Ummah began to notice a different type of flourishing was when they saw the love of the brotherhood and bond of Islam that resulted in them coming together. As brothers in the deen, they were sharing half of whatever they had with a total stranger. And the connection was only, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. You say that, I say that for that reason, the bond is thicker than blood. Here goes. Take half of whatever I, I own. Today we're not prepared to give inheritance to the person it belongs to in our own house just because we have the cash in our hand. And yet the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, it was not a matter of inheritance. It was a matter of splitting whatever they had 50-50 with a total stranger for the sake of Allah. And they did it with no persecution. We are not prepared to do the right thing. With every persecution, they were prepared to give more than what they had to. You see the difference? That's why we talk of the seerah. So that we can be shaken a little bit to say, 
the persecution they did well no persecution we're not doing well love of the dunya you can't give your sister her share you can't give your brothers their shares you can't let go of a few rands where is it going to take you give it for the sake of allah and see what allah gives you La ilaha illallah. then we can call ourselves the true ummatis of nabi muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam may allah almighty grant us goodness may allah bless us all every year and this is the 12th year if i'm not mistaken we gather to discuss certain aspects of the seerah you can never ever cover that entire seerah you can't but you can learn lesson from points and you can remind each other in a nice way trust me the reminder i delivered today is for me more than anyone else and then for everyone may allah strengthen us the persecution that we may have faced we are facing or we will face may allah strengthen us it's okay for as long as it's in the good cause and we will do the right thing come what may May Allah Almighty grant us the companionship of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah alleviate our suffering. And may Allah Almighty eradicate the diseases and the difficulties and hardships that the globe is going through. But I tell you, as I end, there is no way to solve your problems except by returning to the straight and narrow. If we mend our ways and habits and we change ourselves, Allah will open the doors fling them open and even if at that point materially we don't have much we will be so content just like the sahaba may allah bless us in every way